Hello and welcome to the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel. This is a channel that studies the Holy Bible. And we are on, uh, we are in, I should say, the Book of Romans in chapter 11. And if you got a chance to see chapter 10, uh, this was kind of like a continuation from where Paul is talking to the Romans that have been converted into the kingdom and just trying to admonish them and give them more insight and edification into their new uh, found freedom in the kingdom, which they keep going back to slave bondage of the Old Testament. And he was just trying to just remind them of the newness that they have come into. So it starts off from where, again, it left in chapter 10, where um, he was talking to them about what Isaiah was saying in the Old Testament. So chapter 11 says, I say then, have God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. Okay, And that's Paul. And that's who he, uh, that's who his genealogy is from. And again, he's saying this because many of the children of Israel that uh, were under the calling for Jesus Christ was to be saved, to um, come into the new covenant they were rejecting it because they didn't believe that it was possible. They didn't believe that God had actually started a new kingdom, that he had given a new leader into the earth, and it was his son. You know, because they were so used to Moses, the old leader in the law that, you know, God had given, given him. But there was a new law. There was a new leader, Christ Jesus, and there's a New Testament. And uh, Jesus Christ is providing it. And so they're kind of confused and still going back and forth. So verse 2 goes on to say, God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew, which is the children of Israel, Jacob. So what you got, what the scripture says of Isaiah, how he makes intercession to God against Israel, saying, because in that day, you know, Isaiah, again, after Moses and all the other different leaders that existed, that the children of Israel had to follow. He says, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars. And I am left alone, and they seek my life. Now, this is what Isaiah is saying after he's lead, been leading, I've been a leader. And he says, but what says the answer of God unto him? For I have reserved myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. So God is saying, even in that day, even from the Old Testament, though there were still some that did not do properly, you know, follow the commandments of God, and they had... Um, started going into idolatry because they were after they were bowing their knee to the image of Baal, of Baal, Baal, however you want to call it. And um, they were not bowing down to the Heavenly Father, the God of Heaven, their creator. So again, they were into idolatry. So he says that he did still have 7,000 men who have bowed the knee to the image of Baal. So he had no, it says, but what says the answer of God unto him? He says, I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not. Okay, so there was some that was that had not bowed. So then it goes on to say in verse 5, Even so then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then is it no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. So he's saying right here, there is a remnant also, okay, still, that has not, to this present day, they have not bowed to any other God, that they are bowing to the Jesus Christ, the new Savior that was sent with grace, okay? And that's the remnant, he says, that um, according to the election of grace that he has established with these people. So that, you know, they don't have to go back. And if they do something wrong, grace covers them. Okay. And that is under salvation. That is what salvation is all about. But again, we do not take grace for granted because he also talks about defilement of the garment. And I'll go back into that. Romans chapter one, verse 17, refreshes us of how his wrath went out toward people who did once they came into the kingdom and they decided they wanted to do what they wanted to do. So then it goes on to verse seven says, what then Israel have not obtained that which he seeks for, but the election has obtained it and the rest were blinded. 
Okay, so there were some that did obtain the grace of God through Jesus Christ, and th there were some that did not believe. And because they did not believe, he's saying they were blinded. Okay, and according as it is written, God has given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear. And it is unto this very day. There are people like that, he is saying, that have not accepted Christ Jesus as their personal savior. They were under, um, they were part of the 12 tribes of Israel. They were part of the gener generation and the genealogy of Israel, Jacob, but they did not accept Christ Jesus as their personal savior. And it was uh, presented to them. He was presented to them. And so because of that, they are blinded. And according as it is written, God has given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear. And it is happening, it says, again, unto this very day. So they can hear about salvation. They won't believe it. They won't receive it because, because they never did in the beginning. It's, you know, it's, it's no more available to them. It says, let their eyes be darkened that they may not see. Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped over a verse. And so it goes to verse 9. And David said, let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. So these people have become a trap of them own selves, it says, because they did not believe in Christ Jesus. They felt like they had to still do work for their salvation, work for their righteousness, work for their uh, relationship with the Heavenly Father whenever he had sent his son into the earth for them to not have to do that because he knew that it was impossible for them to be able to do it because he had already tried it with the Old Testament. If we want to reflect back to that, you know, as our reference point of reference, you know, those people, the children of Israel in the Old Testament couldn't keep those, you know, the things that God had commanded them to keep. So and thank God we don't have to try to keep them today because who would be able to keep them? If they couldn't keep them, do you think we could today? I don't think so. <laughs> so uh, let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their backs always is what, you know, J David said. It says, I say then, had they stumbled that they should fall and God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. And again, if you uh, did have an opportunity to hear chapter 10, it talked about that in chapter 10 also how, you know, because who salvation was originally uh, established for, the genealogy of Jacob, the Israelites, that's the, the uh, tribe Jesus Christ came through. Um, and it was, he came through Judah, which was one of the sons of Jacob, one uh, Israelite. And uh, so salvation was originally for them, but it was carried over into the Gentiles, other people, and to provoke them to, to provoke the Israelites to jealousy, the ones that did not in the beginning want to even receive Christ as their personal savior. So it says, now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? Because, they, and it's a saying, some of them are going to, you know, they're falling because of the riches of the world and uh, the riches of the Gentiles. It says, for I speak to you Gentiles in as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. Again, this is Paul talking. He has written this letter to the Romans. He said, if by any means I may provoke to emulation, to jealousy, them which are my flesh and might save some of them. Okay? For if uh, the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. So, uh, and if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them, and uh, with them partakes of the root of, and fatness of the olive tree, olive tree mainly meaning uh, Christ Jesus being the, the great olive tree, of course. The oil, the Holy Ghost. Okay, so it says, boast not against the branches, so don't boast about it. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root bears thee. Okay, and that in fact is that Jesus Christ has saved you, not that you have anything to boast about, that you did anything, you know, so great. Uh, 
so we should just keep that in mind that, you know, it is salvation through Christ Jesus and all that he has done. And he did a lot. And, uh, you know, we have to ask ourselves, will we ever do something like that? If we, you know, of course, if we was called, we would have no other choice but to do it. But um, it is something to think about. Okay, so it says, that was say then. The branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. So, well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou stands by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. So don't be haughty about it, your salvation, but fear. And don't just feel like because, oh, I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. I can do this and I can do that. And he says, no. But you're supposed to be fearful of the Lord and thankful, you know, still reverencing God Almighty as your creator and thanking him because he did establish salvation for you. So that you can commune with him one-on-one -on -one yourself through the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so it says, Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God are them which fail. Severity, but toward thee, goodness. If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. So see, there is, again, he's saying right here, that one could be cut off even though you've been grafted in, even though you've been put into uh, the covenant, the new covenant with Christ Jesus. Getting haughty and taking God's grace for granted can push you out. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. Okay, so if, if they did get, what it's saying right here, if you did get cut off and you did repent, you are able to come back in under the covenant. For if thou wert cut off of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these which be the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree? Okay, so we are all considered olive trees once we have partake of the big olive tree, Christ Jesus. We are considered olive trees, and that's just like a um, metaphor Jesus Christ uses to describe many of the just like saints, we are saints sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Many words he uses to refer to the people that have come in to the covenant and been saved by the power of the Holy Spirit. So it says, For I would not, brothers, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. So some of the Israelites, he says, is they have been blinded. OK, because they chose not to believe what Christ did, what uh, the Heavenly Father did and bringing them in and sending Christ Jesus down to be the son of God. So and so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. And there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. OK, so again, this is telling us right here, you know. That it was already prophesied that Jesus Christ would come. And it's all in the Old Testament. And I, as I don't know if you've had an opportunity to hear some of my old videos where I've actually said that. And I'll say it again. You know, in the Old Testament, uh, you hear the prophets prophesying that Jesus Christ is coming. And with the, the Gospels, Jesus Christ is here. And then as we go into the Acts and the letters, well, that is the actual uh performance of Christ after he left and after he he uh, he converted individuals into the Holy Spirit and they went about going and in, in his authority under the power of the Holy Spirit and this is of course one of the books Paul who was the one of the one that, that was converted and he wrote this to the Romans and in Rome to the ones that were converted into the kingdom then it goes on to tell us that uh as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. For the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. So one can have a calling. God can be calling a person, and they could not have repented. That calling is just like the Israel's, because Jesus Christ said, I came for the lost, the lost uh, house of Israel. So that was a calling. He was coming, and some of them I'm quite sure they had different gifts, you know, that they could do that God had given them. OK, and he wasn't requiring at the because, you know, everyone is predestined to be whatever 
God predestines you to be and come through and have whatever gift he predestines for you to have. Again, just like to be a part of his kingdom and and to also be predestined to the call of God into his kingdom. Okay, so one has to actually come into the knowledge of that. And, and once you come into the knowledge of that, then you will repent. You'll actually confess and change into a Holy Spirit being and begin to walk in the will of God, which he wants us to walk in. So that's what that's saying. So for as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. And this is going into that, basically. Even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy, they also may obtain mercy. For God has concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all. So, oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Okay, because he is so merciful and so wonderful and gracious. Uh, so why would we want to take advantage of God and his goodness? Okay, so then it goes on to say, uh, uh, that's what, okay, wait a minute. verse 34, for who have known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Not none of us, and that's for sure. Or who has first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. Amen. And hey, 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 amen. <laughs> okay, so, um, and then another scripture the Holy Spirit led me to that is like a drop again to this chapter, Romans chapter 10, was uh, I was led to Psalms chapter, uh, Psalms 4, verse 3. It says, know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. Okay? So, God bless you. And uh, always remember God loves you and he has a call for you into the kingdom of God. So, I will let this be the end of our Bible study today chapter 11 and i will see you on the next bible study god bless you